yeah. but you don't have to be John Adams to write a, to write your whatever next piece you want to do. And I think that's what a lot of young people. John Adams has John Adams locked up. You know yeah. what I mean? <laughs> right. There's John Adams is the best John Adams there could ever be. So, you know, yeah. that's the truth. It's like you, you are you and I, oh, somebody, I, I remember saying, you also can put aside a little space for like the unexpected to happen in your career mm-hmm. too. Right. Because I think you're, you're talking a little bit like about the, the drive to succeed and to, to, the, by the way, the success part of it isn't about, I don't think it's not about the um, recognition and being in the press and getting the article in the Times or, or awards or whatever. That's not it. It's the nice thing is those opportunities to work for at the highest level mm-hmm. with the orchestras, the opera companies, whatever. Like you want to have that chance to hear some of those people play your 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 music um so i think that's mostly what that drive is about um but yeah i mean if 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 you're finding that somewhere along your career mid-career you're not that's not what's happening like that's okay there's there are other there are going to be opportunities and and doesn't don't you know, allow a little room for the unexpected, for serendipity, for something to kind of happen. Because you never know. You never know if, like, this piece might, that you did write five years ago, maybe that piece does spark somebody's interest, right? Somebody exactly. Somebody picks it's it up. still there. Yeah. That's the beauty of composing is that it, everything is there. It's yeah. still there. It's not yeah. like uh, being a violinist or something where you have to keep it up. There's something... Yeah. Uh, there's something about having that uh, record that mm-hmm. you wrote that piece. Like at some point in time, I was able to do that. You know? Oh, I know. Isn't it amazing <laughs> when you look back and you're like, damn, I, how did I do that? I wrote this piece. Like I find that it was when I'm writing a piece. I'm just like, I'll go back and look. I wrote that piece. I wrote all those notes. Like, how did I do that? Because sometimes you forget. Like, it's the weirdest thing. Maybe, I don't know if you had an experience, but every time I sit down to write, I feel like I forget how to write. So right now I'm writing this piece, um, for a you know big orchestra, yeah, and I actually have like half of my orchestra pieces, like on the like now, right now it's all clean, but yeah. I had I had them all over the floor, yeah, just to remember some of the things that I right. did that I liked, so yeah. I can use them in the new piece, yeah. Because it was funny because my wife was telling me because I'm writing this piece and my wife is telling me like why are you trying to restart like all yeah. these things you're talking about are things you haven't done before. I'm like, yeah. Well, what are some things that actually are good? And she actually started listing some things. I'm like. And then I started to spark, wait, I can do that in a different way. Mm-hmm. And let me just do that instead of putting so much pressure on myself. Right. So this whole thing about like reminding yourself that you did it before. Yeah. And that you don't have to reinvent yourself every yeah. time, I think is a good, also a pretty yeah. good lesson well, too. Yeah, well, because, you know, as you enter, um, I mean, dare I say a mid-career uh, area. I don't in, know what it is. I'm in, <laughs> I'm in mid New Jersey. <laughs> That's how I feel like. <laughs> uh, and thank you everybody for coming. <laughs> no, uh, no, this, the, 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 no, but as you enter that phase, like you, you're, I think we're sort of meant to have acquired hopefully some technique, right? Right. Like that's okay to use technique. It's okay to use that thing. And Interestingly enough, like as part of what I did in, in my residency was I, I, I just said, okay, I'm going to go back and I'm going to listen to almost everything that I've written, like from really early that I still allow to be out there. Right. <laughs> just as a retrospect, well, I was driving actually. So, and I kind of sort of shed some new light on stuff. Cause I realized, okay, I guess I really only do three things. That's okay. Like most composers do three things right um, three, four, is like, three is good you know some only do two <laughs> and you wish they had a third thing and they're you're gonna hear how pieces are related and that there are similarities and they said you know i was like oh man that groove i've here i am in that groove again or oh yeah here's the long note tune over the busy you know background texture t- thing right um but i think what you also realize is okay that's just kind of my thumbprint right that's those are just the things that I do that hopefully make my music sound like me and not like somebody else. And, um, at, at this stage, I'm okay to just sort of not let I'm rewriting or re rehashing stuff that I've already done, but hopefully like just allowing whatever 
that experiences that we built up, mm-hmm. just let that come out in the music too, right? Let yeah, that, and don't put so much pressure on yourself to just precisely. do something brand new. And then you stop writing again, all over again, and yeah. the whole process repeats itself. Right. I'm just repeating, I guess, what I am going through, I guess. See, perfect <laughs> <But> illustration <laughs> of your point. <laughs> exactly.